Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. Today we will present you a basic tutorial in which we will show how to generate a beam with volume type element in ANSYS. To begin with, we're going to start with the ANSYS interface that you already know. For this tutorial, we're going to create a rectangular hollow profile of 40 by 40 by 5 millimeters. Then we're going to extrude it, obtaining the volume beam that we are, that upon we're going to simulate the proper way. So to begin with, the first thing we're going to do is create the key points of the exterior of the profile. There's many ways to create this profile, but we're just going to show you new ways to do it. So we're going to go to preprocessors, modeling, create, key points, inactive coordinate system, which means the active one you can find it here, the coordinate system is equal to zero, and zero means the one that you can see on the screen. There's active, there are active, other active coordinate, there are other coordinate systems that you can use, but you have to read more about it on the help or wait for new tutorials. So in active CS, we're gonna put key point number one, we're gonna move this here and put the location is zero, zero, zero for the first one. For the second point is 40 millimeters, but we're gonna split it by a thousand because we're working in meters. So it's 40, zero, zero. We're gonna, for the third point, we have the same thing, but just here, 40 divided by a thousand, apply. And for the fourth point, we have zero and 40 divided by a thousand. We click okay. We have all the points. To view them all, you have to go to the oblique or the asymmetric view. As soon as you go there, you'll see the key points the proper way. Now we're going to create lines between these key points, straight lines. We could create an area straight through them, but we're going to show you how to do other things. So we're going to create a straight line between key point 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 1. Now we have the four key points of the profile. If we, if we use zoom in or zoom out, you're going to lose the area so the best thing to do is use the gplot on the bar which means global plot is just going to show you the lines and the key points the key points are the corners and the lines are visible now what we're going to do is create an area arbitrary we could have done it through a key point from the beginning and create just the area through all the key points but to, so you understand more of how you can use these options we're going to create it by lines today so you hit by lines and what you have to do is just simply select the lines that you want to create the area throughout. Here it doesn't matter which way you select the lines, you can actually select them in a completely random way. It won't matter, the area will be created the proper way. This is not the case with the key points in which you have to be clockwise or anti-clockwise def defining the area if you use the area by through our key points option. Okay, so now we have the exterior of our profile, but if we extrude this, we're not gonna have the hollow, the, the, hole, the hole in the middle. So what are we going to do is create another key point, continue creating key points, and we're gonna create the inside square of the profile. So for that, we're gonna go to the fifth key, key point. Now the coordinates are gonna be five divided by a thousand zero and five divided by a thousand. We apply and you'll see that we have the, the point, the fifth point, so it's gonna be the sixth one, which is gonna be five, 35 divided by a thousand and five divided by a thousand. The seventh point is gonna be the same one, but with 35 on this one apply we can see it here and the eighth key point we gotta move this somewhere where it doesn't bother us the eighth point is gonna be five we click ok so again we obtained the four key points maintaining this view and not moving anything we're gonna create lines through all those key points we're gonna re repeat the same procedure And after we have those lines, we're gonna create an area throughout the lines. I'm gonna select the lines and opposite so you can see that nothing happens. There's no difference. Actually, I'm gonna show you an option. 
I was planning on showing it. So you you can select either one line, or there's an option in Nancy that you, allows you to have a loop. So when you select one thing, it's gonna select the whole loop if the lines are interconnected. So if you click on one, you're gonna select all of them. You're gonna do it again. If you can select one, you're gonna select all of them. That makes your life a little bit easier, especially sometimes when you have a very complicated loop. I'm gonna hit OK. And now we have two lines. You cannot really see the two areas, sorry, not two lines. So we're gonna to have to list the areas, and which we're gonna do. Normally what you do is you go and list areas, and you'll see that there's two, but when there's many, there's a big number of areas, you need to do what's called an area list, a, 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 a list, comma, P from peak. When you do that, you're gonna pick up the areas and you're gonna be able to see there's just two clicks. You can click or you can go and see, move, move the cursor and see, okay, this is the one and there's the other one. And it says that we have two areas with defined by the different lines and stuff, so it is fine. But at this moment, we only have two areas overlaid and nothing else. So what we need to do is go to operate onto the booleans and we're going to do a subtract of areas. I'm going to select this area from which we're going to hit OK, from which we're going to subtract the small area. And there we go. We have our rectangular profile made, made from shells which we are going to extrude and obtain the the beam of volumes so now the next step is to extrude we can use different options we're going to use one of the common ones which is copying one of the key points away that we're going to do we're going to go to copy key points and we're going to create it, copy this key point so to so make it easier okay at one meter along the y direction the positive y direction so towards the top of the monitor if we zoom out we're going to see that we have key point nine on the very top of the monitor this could be a problem. Sometimes we're gonna do a G plot because because the, our things are so far, we need to we need to be careful when we create the line. For that, you can use the numbering. You can use the key point of numbering. Okay, so we know that we have to connect key point number four to key point number nine. So we can go to create lines, straight line, and we select and see key point number four. It tells you the key point, key point number here, four, and two key point number nine there. Okay, once we have that, what we got to do is extrude the area. So we're gonna go and again to, into the operate booleans, uh, sorry, operate extrude. We're going to extrude an area along a line. So the area is the only one that we have. We select OK, and the line is this long one, and we hit OK. Now we have, we're going to go again to plot controls numbering, we're going to deactivate the key points, OK. So now we have our beam created by volumes. Here we have entities, volumes, areas, links, lines, key points. One of the things when using the extrusion option is that it creates double lines. In this situation, they can be problematic. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a line list, common, comma, P. And you'll see that everywhere on each one of the sides, there's no double lines. But if we go on the area where, we, on the line where we extruded it, there's two lines, line nine and line 16. This could be a problem in many simulations. So what we're gonna to have to do is X, uh, do a merging of the lines and a merging of the entities. In order to do that, you have to go to numbering controls, merge items. Here we select key points. We hit OK, 
And now if we do the same, the line list, comma p, there's no double lines anywhere. So there we have it. Now we have our model. I'm gonna put it on an ISO view, isometric view. No, it's not too good. We're just gonna tilt it manually and keep it like that a little bit. Now what we do, we, we have the model. We have to define the element types and the material properties. Okay, so we're gonna to go to element types, add a D delete, add solid brick A no 185. Okay, and close this. There's no real constants because we're working with bricks, so we only have to define the material properties. So we're going to material properties, material models, and we're going to define a structural linear elastic isotropic material, which is going to be still 2.1 E11 Yang's modulus and 0 0.3, oops, sorry, 2.1 exponentially 11 and 0 0.3 the Poisson's coefficient. Then we're gonna to go to density. We're gonna define 7,800 kilograms per cu cubic meter. We're gonna have we have the material number material model for number one. We close this window, and now our next step is to tell ANSYS that this volume has those properties. So, because there's no sections, we don't have to do anything with more more with the modeling. So here we go to meshing mesh attributes. We do a peak volume select that volume and this volume has material number one and has element type number one we hit ok and now what we have to do is to mesh this volume I'm gonna do a plot volumes so we don't have all the other entities we have to mesh this volume but when we're usually working with volumes you gotta be thinking of the aspect radio, rate, ratio, ratio of the elements so when you have a beam you have a thick five, five millimeters thickness you gotta take into consideration that if the thickness of the meshing is not at, uh, at most five or smaller than five you're gonna have only one element per thickness if the thickness if the element would be 10 we're gonna have a five thickness and a 10 width element so in order to obtain high quality meshings you have to use you have to take into consideration the size, the size aspects of the meshings. So we're going to use the mesh tool again, because it's pretty convenient, especially for the tutorials. And we're going to set the global size of 5 millimeters divided, 5 millimeters, 5 divided by 1000. I'm going to hit OK. And for the volume, we're going to use a hexahedral mesh, and it's going to be sweep, because this type of a structure, any type of a structure that can be extruded can be swept and then the sweeping measure is pretty accurate and pretty good it's not suitable for everything but it, when you can use it, it's good so we select the sweep, the, the, the beam, hit OK wait a second and as you can see we have a really good high quality meshing it's a hexahedral high quality meshing There's a probably a significant number of elements but the meshing is pretty good okay so now what we'll do is proceed to simulate the model for that we'll have to define the loads well the solution the analysis type which usually is on the static so we're going to keep it on static and we're going to define the the contour conditions so we're going to go to define loads apply structural we're going to put a displacement on areas so for that we can do we can zoom in here although we don't see it we know that the area that we want to embed is on the back on areas and we're going to select exactly that area and we're going to embed it with this restraining all of the degrees of freedom on zero you have the sign here you can tilt this or you can Look, look at it some other way because the meshing and the, the too many elements make it more difficult to see but believe me it's there okay so I'm gonna tilt this again back that way and we're gonna apply the gravitational actual acceleration let's try to use one of these views we're gonna apply the gravitational acceleration which we can apply it apply it anyway we can 
say that in this situation x is the gravitational direction or z is the gravitational direction. For this time we're going to choose z, the, the z-axis as the gravitational direction, but it doesn't really matter because we have a, rect a, a square profile, so it behaves on either, either way the same. So for that we're going to go to inertia, structural, gravity, global, and we're going to apply on z the 9.81 meters per square second acceleration it doesn't matter here I I said it in previous tutorials we're going to do it minus in this situation because the gravitational acceleration here you're introducing it as, a, as an inertial acceleration so it should go the opposite way of the gravitational acceleration if you make a mistake or your result have a problem you just go and change that it doesn't matter so now we have the model completed all the conditions apply so what we have to do is go to solve current ls we hit ok and we wait for the solution is done message the solution is done so now we're going to go to general post processing read the results last And we're going to plot the results, the counter plot, null solution, degree of freedom summation, displacement, vector zoom. And there we go. We have our volume beam, where you can see the thickness and everything, simulated the proper way, and is bending downwards, which makes sense. We're going to plot again now the stress, the von Mises stress. And here, as you can see, if you zoom in, you'll see that the tensions are concentrated, the stresses are concentrated on the corners and around the embedment, which makes a lot of sense. And there's also a region of compression and a region of extension. Now we're going to do the last thing, the vector plot, which is pretty uh, on the predefined uh, translation. This can be very useful when you're analyzing complex displacements that you don't really understand or you cannot visualize them the proper way because it shows you the arrows, the displacement arrows of or the displacement vectors for any or for any of the nodes. Moving this can be a little bit more tricky because there's so many there's so much information that it can be more difficult for ANSYS to move this piece depending on how how good is your computer but it's a very useful tool so now now that we've finished this I'm gonna go and quit quit no save and now you know how to use the how to generate a beam with volume type elements you can apply it to any other things that you have in fact these letters have been generated in a similar way so we hope you enjoy this presentation and we would like to thank you for your attention. For more tutorials, please follow us on, the, on our community and on the social networks.